Welcome to Let's Talk, Ed and Zahi. April is Community College Month, and you and I have both spent uh, much of our career in higher education working in two-year community colleges, and the month is all about celebrating what makes community colleges so great and why they're such a good choice for students. And that's what we're talking about today. And just at the very base, Zahi, what would you say is the best reason for students to look at a community college and attend a community college? Well, I would say, I would start by saying that community colleges are the unsung heroes of higher education in this nation. It's a relatively unique system to the United States. And it is the unsung hero because it is the first stepping stone into higher education for the people who are typically not making it because it's a selective university or it's a private university or because it is further away and, and or schedules are not uh, uh, amenable. So if, if we think about what community colleges are, they are the, uh, the venture of a of a community of people, regional community that says we're going to tax ourselves to create opportunities for transfer, to create opportunities for rent and community development and economic development uh, locally. And, and I think many people think of us as, a, and, and you say that very often, a continuation of high school uh, or high school 2.0 or whatever, but in reality, we are it. And by far, we're the largest system of higher, well, we're not a real system, but, but, but a contingent of institutions that serve the largest number of students in the nation, not even a, uh, in the ballpark of comparison. Yeah, and one of the things you said is the chip on every community college's shoulder is that somehow community college is not real college. And that's such a falsehood. Um, you know, if, if you're thinking about college being residential life with Greek life and parties every weekend and, you know, looking at, at college through the lens of Animal House, for example, then, yeah, community college is probably not real college in that, in that case. However, you're looking at instructors that are highly qualified uh, to be there, in some cases as qualified, if not more qualified, as far as their educational background, as those at four-year institutions uh, in your transfer classes. And then you have your career and technical classes, which are really, I think, the, the meat and potatoes of community colleges, uh, because it is that that workforce development. It is putting together people for the future betterment of your community. And the instructors that are teaching in those programs, I mean, you talk about true experts in their fields. And so many colleges can brag on the idea that in their CTE faculty, they have hundreds of years of combined experience uh, of people that have worked in the industry. Uh, you know, these are not people that have never left college, uh, you know, gotten the PhD and stayed in college and never set foot outside of college walls. These are people that have worked in the industries that they turn around and teach and they're creating that future workforce for America. Absolutely agreed with you. Every single word you said was just, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about this from the perspective of what I would like to, to say if I were as eloquent as you are, and it would be that. But uh, beside, uh, beside making you feel good a few days after a tornado hit uh, Robinson and, and destroyed uh, one of the uh, facilities of the campus, I wanted to touch on on a couple of elements based on what you said. Number one is we don't we don't rely on teaching assistants. We rely on, like you said, subject matter experts. And when we do our uh, 
when we play our cards right, we are competitive with uh, four-year institutions in terms of uh, higher in terms of the hiring faculty, uh, because we have to meet the same minimum credentials, which are one degree higher uh, for transfer and uh, you know proof of subject matter expertise, like a journey person card or or mastery uh, based on on certifications and what have you in general edu- in um, uh, career technical education. But it doesn't end there. Not everybody's particularly interested in the lifestyle of a four-year institution because it comes with a particular lifestyle. And uh, there are lots of people who like the element of being among the students. In the past, I've hired people from Stanford, from MIT, from Berkeley, from LA, from from USC and what have you, uh, Santa Cruz, and and you name them. And, and they could have had jobs in almost every place uh, uh, in the nation. It's just they chose to be in a community college. It could be because it's their community and they want to stay local. It could be because they have a passion for teaching uh, and they want to do it at the two-year level. Additionally, what I would like to add to what you said is the idea that we are less when we're dealing with two-year versus four-year is erroneous because the class is transfer. And there are so many individuals in the thousands, there are individuals who have finished or not in four year, who come back to the two year for changing career, for taking professional classes to enhance their skills. So um, the knock on, on two year colleges is coming from a place of sometimes elitism, many times of ignorance. Do you agree? I don't know. I'm just... uh... Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think a little bit of it is, you know, community colleges tend to be right in your backyard. And there's always a little bit of that grass is greener. That when I go to, you know, the the big ivy covered walls of the university somewhere that, you know, that's going to be a better experience. And for some students, that absolutely is the right choice. Uh, we get that, and uh, but at the same time, the value that's there of community college for for so many different reasons. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about smaller class sizes than a university. You know, a large four year university. It's not uncommon for them to say, you know, hey, we recommend you take these intro level classes at your community college because you're going to be in an environment that's smaller and you're going to get that one-on-one attention that you're not going to get when you come to our university and take a class in a lecture hall with 300 people uh, where you are not much more than just a number. Uh, The other thing that we haven't really addressed um, is the, the true value of the dollar at a community college. Uh, a four-year university in state even is expensive. Um, a community college tends to be a much more inexpensive decision. So you hear so much right now about college debt and, and how much of a burden that is for so many students. And you go to a community college for two years and then transfer and finish your bachelor's degree, you're probably saving a tremendous amount of money. Is it going to mean you're going to graduate debt-free? No, not necessarily. But is it going to help you considerably? Absolutely. And, And that's something that a lot of people need to take into consideration. The other thing that I really like about community college, too, is there's a lot of opportunity to come back. Uh, You mentioned it a little bit earlier about, you know, you see students that transfer back from universities. You see students that have started a career and change a career. And it's not uncommon to see those so-called non-traditional students in classrooms, in community colleges, and they fit right in. 
Uh, it's not intimidating or it's not supposed to be intimidating. Uh, you know, for a lot of individuals, yes, it would be intimidating to walk back into a classroom after being out of school for a long time. But, uh, you know, the idea that you can go back to school and the options are there and, and you have that shorter entry and exit point than you would going to a four year university because you're going to be out with your degree or certificate in two years or less, typically. No, no doubt. No doubt. The unfortunate uh, situation that two year colleges find themselves in is that there have there has been a significant decline over the last decade, a little over a decade now in enrollments. Um, and and uh, it's not really ex easily explainable. Uh, you know, yes, the pandemic has decreased the uh, enrollment in general uh, because of the loss of people, because of the the need for employment. Uh, all of those are, are are realities, but the decline has started well before. So. There is something that we're missing as, as across the nation in our ability to attract individuals that the private, especially for profit, has been able to reel in in increasing numbers. So, so there, uh, the declines in community colleges is, is commensurate with a significant and steep, uh, uh, increase in enrollment in those private, especially the private for-profit two and four year. And additionally, all of the non-credit um, online type modalities that we talked about. So there is something that that is to be said about the grass being greener. But is it time for us to um, educate people about the value? of two-year colleges. I think I think we miss the boat very often when we sell ourselves short. When we allow things like what you commonly say, I'm just taking my uh, generals out of the way or I'm there just to transfer. Uh, I, I think we need to change the whole conversation uh, for a simple fact. We should be planning on being a contender in higher education for the future. In the last, what is it, five years, there have been more than 500 uh, colleges and universities that shut uh, their close. Uh, they closed their doors, and and the number is is going to be increasing. Given the fact that we're local, we cannot afford not to be there for our people, because then. There is nobody that serves them. Even if you say online and anybody can jump online, for any number of reasons, we know that it's not the right education for everyone. We know that they don't necessarily have access, the cost, uh, the, the and on and on. So, so we don't have a choice but be here for the next generation. So what is it that we need to do? Perhaps it is also time during this month to, to take just to take a pause and and uh, rethink what we need to do. What do you think? Do you agree? I mean, do you see yeah. it differently? Yeah, you know, and, and the hard part is you, you feel like you're already, you know, digging out from a deep hole just to begin with because you are sort of having to frame that that argument that, well, no, we are just as good. And when that's the argument that you almost have to start with, that, that can be a difficult argument to make for a lot of people. Uh, so I, I think a lot of it is, you know, really making sure that we're not humble about who we are, um, you know, to, to talk about what it is that we do, not what we can do, but what we do. Uh, so we're talking about the careers that, that we help people with. We, we talk about the opportunities that we give students and we make sure people understand that we're doing this at a value. Um, and it, it's very hard, you know, very often the, the idea of what's good and what's inexpensive are, 
are not, you know, things that fit together very well. Uh, you know, when you hear about something inexpensive, you think it's cheap and cheap often is not good. And there, there is psychology to pricing. And I'm not saying by any means community colleges need to go and, and raise their tuition rates and, and match, you know, universities by any means. But at, at the same time, um, I, I think being very humble with our budgets, and, and in some cases, we've had to be humble with budgets because we don't have as much to work with. Uh, so we have done things uh, to get by that universities don't necessarily have to do. Uh, but I think the thing is, we have to really go out and sing the praises of who we are and what we can do for students, what we do for students, not what we can do, but what we do for students and make sure people understand that, you know, not only are we just as good, but we are as good uh, and really turn that narrative around of, oh, I'm just going to the local community. College. Chris, in effect, I, 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 a couple of things jumped in uh, to mind when you were talking. Number one is we are the real MacGyvers, you know, you give us a credit card and bubble gum and, and, you know, we, we, we can fly a rocket, right. Uh, or even build one and, and fly it. Uh, but, but, uh, in truth, yes. I mean, we've, we've functioned for a long time on, on, on shoestrings. Um, but I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things that I have participated in, uh, part of a, a team of individuals that uh, in community colleges that I don't think any university had thought about. When we were in California, we created a three-year to a bachelor degree in computer science with the local uh, university, three years. In computer science, knowing that, at least at the time, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's still the same today, in six years, fewer than 44% of students who entered were completing. We were completing in three years. Um, and same rigor, same everything, because we were backtracking from the American computing machine uh, um, uh, curriculum. Uh, similarly, we created the first in the nation food safety uh, undergraduate education program and, and so on. Uh, you know, we can keep on going. Uh, at Lincoln Trail, you know, we had the broadband technology and, and the uh, petroleum uh, technology programs that are, you know, needed nationally because we don't produce those uh, processing technology individuals. And there's a huge need in, in all of the uh, telecommunication and broadband uh, fields. Those are areas that are not touched by four years. Those are areas that are not necessarily ripe for four years. But this is where two-year colleges have invested their time and energy. They're, they're very little, using their very little dollars to create those opportunities for their taxpayers and beyond the, the, the region many times, like in the case of processing tech or broadband that are very unique. And as I mentioned to you in, in things in California and, and what have you. So, it's not just about singing our praises and being in front of people in their face every single day. It is about saying we're going to break with the past and we're going to tell you what the last hundred plus been about for our institutions from Joliet Junior College, which was the first in the nation, to the 1,200 that are here today serving each one in her or his neighborhood. Absolutely. So we are celebrating Community College Month here on Let's Talk Ed. I think we have a whole bunch of different topics that we could talk about all month long if we wanted to do that. If you enjoy discussions like this, uh, be sure and uh, subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. Ring that bell down below. Uh, you will get notifications whenever we post new content. And uh, certainly you can find Let's Talk Ed on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.